want to move on to our quick fire questions. I want to I, actually what I want to do is keep talking to you for another two hours, but I'm going to move on to quick fire questions anyway. Um, we take questions from our listeners uh, who send them to us on Facebook or sorry on Twitter or Instagram. We probably have a Facebook page too, don't we? Someone should let me know that. <laughs> Twitter, Instagram at Politicon, or you can email them to us at podcasts at politicon dot com. Um, Steve from Brooklyn asks. Will our relations with Russia get worse now that Trump is out of the picture? Well, it depends on what you mean by worse or better. I think they're terrible right now in the sense that things where we should be standing up to the Russians, we're not standing up to them at all. I think uh, 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 President Biden will be much, uh, much readier to confront Vladimir Putin uh, and to say, you can't do this. And I think he will rebuild our ties with NATO, which, after all, we created and which contained the Soviet Union until it fell uh, 40 years later. Uh, And one of Putin's big aims has been to weaken NATO and to make uh, gains in Western Europe in terms of building his relationships with, for example, Germany. Uh, So it depends on what you mean by worse or better. I think they'll be better but tougher. Fair. Dominique from Houston asks, the Democratic leadership is getting old. Can the younger generation win nationally? Sure. Uh, and I think they will. I, I don't think Nancy Pelosi will run for speaker again. Really? After this ne- well, she will this time, okay. but not after the next two years. She's already said that before. Uh, and I think a, a new generation of leaders will emerge. Uh, it always happens. It's kind of a natural part of politics. Uh, but I do, I also have to add, by the way, that Pelosi has probably been legislatively uh, and, and in terms of her strategic sense, the most effective Speaker of the House, certainly in modern history and perhaps in history. Has, has, and, to, and to be bipartisan about that, I would say that Mitch McConnell, although I don't agree with him, has been, been damn an good extraordinarily at, effective majority leader at the getting Senate. what he wants. Absolutely, getting what he wants. I mean, ha, if if you look at the fact that this was not a good year for Democrats, um, twenty eighteen was a spectacular year for Democrats in the House. But but given that, even in what was not a good year for Democrats in the House, the the GOP actually lost no seats, and the Democrats, if I if my count is correct, only picked up two. And they happen to be two seats in my state, which only went to Democrats because they had been ungerrymandered. Um, I'm a little bitter because the seat that I ran for was finally redrawn to not be gerrymandered, and a Democrat did pick it up. But <laughs> so I was six years too late. <laughs> but the Democrats didn't pick up many seats. Republicans didn't lose any. This wasn't a great year in the House. But the Democrats still have a pretty strong majority. Are they going to? be at risk of being in the minority ever? I mean, have the Democrats sort of got a majority now for good? 2022 is a perilous year for uh, a party that has an incumbent president in his first term. That first midterm is very difficult. Uh, uh, Only uh, FDR, uh, JFK in 1962, and uh, uh, George W. Bush after 9-11 in 2002 have resisted successfully the tendency to see the party in power at that point uh, lose a fair number of seats. Now, the the Senate landscape is not bad for Democrats in 2022, but every House seat will be up. By the way, a couple of the seats where uh, Republicans are leading here in California, you know, it takes us a long time to count votes out here. In fact, your vote can be received up to 17 days after election day, as long as it's postmarked by election day. And what we saw in 2018 was some evaporating leads and total reversals for some Republicans who thought they won. But we ought to be honest, Democrats thought they were going to pick up about 10 seats in the House. Mm -hmm. Instead, they lost maybe north of 10 seats. Uh, Craig from Dayton asks, should Biden's message have been about it's the economy, stupid, and not about the soul of the nation. Well, he talked a lot about the economy. He did not make the mistake that Hillary Clinton did, uh, where Lynn Vavrick from UCLA calculated that only 9% of her ads were ever about the economy. 
Uh, and yeah, that's inconceivable for a Democrat running for president. Did Biden uh, talk Biden about his tax plan? Uh, he talked about his tax plan, not a lot, but he talked about it in a reassuring way that no one who makes uh, uh, under $400,000 a year would see a tax increase. But he went out and gave several major economic speeches. One of the problems here was that the only internal on which Trump had an advantage was the economy. Now, that advantage shrunk as, as, as the election went on. But in terms of COVID, racial division, healing the country, even law enforcement, uh, those, were, those were places where Biden had a lead. Uh, so I, I'm not going to criticize the Biden campaign. I'm going I'm to praise them. You know, only three incumbent presidents have lost re-election in 100 years. Mm -hmm. It's a tough thing to do. I know I've tried to do it. Uh, came very close, but we didn't get there. Uh, and they were very, very disciplined. And they never, they never had the kind of backbiting you see in campaigns where there would be a story leaked out to the Washington Post or the New York Times about we're going to have a shakeup, so-and-so is in trouble, so-and-so is messed up. None of that happened. It was, a, it was a remarkably disciplined campaign, both in terms of message and in terms of the way it conducted itself externally. Hey, I'm Clay Aiken. To hear the full episode, subscribe to this Politicon podcast on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, or wherever you listen to pods. Please subscribe, rate, and review the show. Go to Politicon.com, follow at Politicon on social media, and listen to a new pod episode of How the Heck every Thursday.